Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Pirate Life. In this episode, um, Sam Briggs, CrossFit Games champion, is going to be joining us. Uh, we're at Deuce Gym, having the chat, and I want to thank sponsors, I want to thank Float Lab, I want to thank UndisputedFitness.com, um, I want to thank Onnit.com, uh, and uh, CFLA. Uh, CrossFit LA for just all the support and all the all the um, encouragement that's gone on and and um, I'm going to get started in just a minute with Sam Briggs who um, is just visiting right now from the uh, the UK for a little bit to go into regionals and and it's great to have you here and just. Um, She's just finished a, a, a bit of a treatment with, with Dr. Matthews, so uh, we're just kind of settling into this. Um, and the first time we met, and it's really great to meet you. And, and so how long have you been in the States preparing for this? Like you're, you're going, t- I guess, tell us, back, back it up a little bit. For not, not everybody knows even really all the extent of what CrossFit is. And so what you've done to get here um, thus far is, is win the Open and to qualify and and then you're going to the regionals and then you'll ostensibly go to the games is that right hopefully uh first of all thank you for having me yeah um yeah as last year went to the crossfit games and i thankfully (laughs) uh, came first so this year my aim is to get back to the games and hopefully defend my title now that you won last year you're not automatically did nope, you used to be like grandfathered yeah. in? You originally the top five had automatic right. pass through. That then changed, and previous winners wouldn't take a spot. No, I'm good. Thanks. Good. Uh, previous winners wouldn't take a spot. Now nobody has any sort of. There's privilege. no pull. No. Crazy. So yeah, we've just done five weeks of open qualification. So each week a new workout was released on the Thursday, uh, this time over here. I was in the UK, so we'd get it at 1 o'clock Friday morning. So I'd get it when I woke up on a Friday. And we'd have uh, from the the Friday until the Monday night to submit a score. And at the end of that, the top 50 qualify for their regionals so our regionals are the 16th to 18th in Copenhagen and then hopefully if all goes well the top three uh, hopefully I'll be one of those will then make it to the games uh, who else are like front runners that are that you'll be competing against well my region is the European regionals and I've got the 2011 and 12 past champion Anne Thoy's daughter uh, to compete against, yep. so it's going to be quite. A tough That's your battle. main competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you uh, when you do the open something like that, do you just do it once, or is it depending on the workout, or do you do it and kind of peel it and and go soft and kind of feel it out a little bit and then bang it out at another time when you're looking for a score, um, or like how do you as an athlete look towards those kinds of things? You know. Yeah, personally, I like to do the uh, workout. Uh, so I do it first thing on a Friday morning, uh, other than the live announcement that I did was obviously on the Thursday night. Right. But I like to do it Friday morning, then it's done and dusted. But then also, if I feel I could have done something better or the tactic that I used didn't work, then right. I can retest it on the Monday. And I redid two of the workouts this year. Uh, one of them was because of an error with... 0.5 of a kilo <laughs> and this the other one was because i felt like oh well, i wanted to test myself to see if i could get back onto the toast bar did you do uh did you do better when you redid them uh both of them i did better yeah yeah i find, i see that a lot like it's like after you feel the workout your body kind of go like it seems like you've answered some questions that you need to answer metabolically like what your output could be and, and physiologically and then you're able to attack it better the yeah, next time. It it's like, like any of the um, any of the named workouts. Right. You tend to get better each time because you've you've felt it. You can change your tactics slightly. You know 
what's going to work. You know where you started to fail, uh, and hopefully you know where you can push it a little bit more. Your Fran score is uh, ridiculous, right? My Fran, th- from the Open or actual Fran? Your actual. My actual Fran, it's not like a what world it? record. It's 219. What's a world record? Uh, I don't know. I think Tulane has gone sub two. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the best. How at much do <laughs> you have to like desire fucking hurting? Like, like uh, I want to be and just I want to fucking hurt and I want to taste my blood from my lungs. I think sub two would pretty much do that. Uh, I retested Fran uh, two weeks ago as part of a. It was four workouts, uh, so you had to do Fran. And every seven minutes, it was a new workout. So your first uh, not to seven was Fran. Right. Seven to 14 was 50 burpee box jump overs. 14 to 21 was 30 muscle-ups for time. And then it was a 1,000-meter row. So, How fast uh, was your row at the end of all that? Uh, 3.43, I think. 3.4. Wow. It's incredible. Uh, that, that was one of the hardest 1,000-meter rows. I, <laughs> I had nothing. But, yeah, that's, that's, that was a 16-second PB on my Fran time and I still felt okay I had no Fran cough so I'm hoping that I could get closer to the two minute I do not think it's possible for me to go sub two I'll leave that to to Lena and Camille they are the pull up queens easy but I was happy to finally get sub 230 so wow yeah that's pretty incredible I mean to me that's like nauseatingly fast that's crazy um what what'd you do before CrossFit Athletically, my original sport was football, or as you guys call it, soccer. Right, so that's what it's called. Yeah, played that. It's called for soccer. Football is a whole different game. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, oblong yeah. Ball. No, Lightness. real, real football. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I played that for a lot of years, and when I retired from that, I used to do a lot of running. So I kind of thought, well, what am I going to do with my time? Started running for a club, and then naturally progressed through I started doing a few triathlons and duathlons Crazy. somebody recommended CrossFit to get stronger for my uh, triathlons got to my first games and thought this is miles better than doing triathlons right 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 so you were kind of like a, a, a thick muscled athlete as a as a football player probably uh, I was and then you, probably one of the bigger on the pitch I used then, to get done all the time then you got really skinny as a as a runner is that right? Like your was, body yeah. has changed. You've had yeah, a lot of different I was formations. Probably, uh, I was probably at my slimmest when I was running a lot. I used to run like once or twice a day. Wow. So as you can imagine, there's not that much on you right. then. And also my eating was not the best. It's the traditional runner's thing. I used to have cereal for breakfast, cereal right. for right, right, right. lunch, and then dinner was probably my only protein intake. My eating is a hell of a lot different now. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, do you what, what? What is your diet like now? I just try and eat clean. Uh, I've done zoning. What does that mean for you? Because a lot of people are like, I like to eat yeah. clean, and they're eating donuts or what? Yeah, you know what I mean? That's not clean. Um, I I've tried zoning. Uh, I don't like measuring things. No, nope, me neither. Really it's too much. Me. I'm not trying to do math yeah. and eat. Thanks. Fuck off. If I'm hungry, I want to eat. I don't right. want to think. Oh my god, I've only got a block left. Right. Uh, definitely not for me, but it helped give me an understanding of portion sizes. Yeah. So I and, know that and it helped. Give I know me that I'm seriously overeating. Like and then <laughs> I had well, and then I had to think about like what what is a macronutrient? Yeah. Like what you know so you get it to helped. know. I'm yeah. glad that I did it, but yeah. it's not for me in the long term. I've done strict paleo for a little bit. Right. And that too is not for me. I was probably the leanest I've been. But I think to sustain that and be good in competition and to be able to train as much as I do is definitely what, what not. Were you, what, are you, what have you added in that helps you in that way? So I still have dairy in my diet. Right. Uh, and I still have some grains I have uh, oatmeal breakfast and especially if I've got a long session in the morning right. if I don't have uh, my oatmeal then I'm hungry halfway through the session so huh. a good breakfast in the morning then I'm set to go so. I like mostly fats yep it seems like you know like a lot of fats and like I don't like yeah. grains like oh, like I don't know I eat right like I, I call it like I'm paleo-ish like I'm like I'm good with cheese I don't yeah. mind and I'm good with rice and 
I watch what all that is, but I guess mostly I look towards like yams or sweet potatoes as far as definitely love the yams, energy. love the sweet potatoes. Uh, I, we've been uh, tested before the games last year to see what sort of uh, energy uh, pathways we can use, and I'm one of those lucky people that if I eat fats, I'll break that down as energy. If I eat carbs, I'll break it down as energy. Right. So I don't really have to. How do they test that? We uh, saw a nutritionist, and they like, and they did some yeah. whatever their battery of hocus yeah, they, they pocus they is. Yeah, do all the little tests, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah, you're one of the lucky few that no matter what you're eating, you're going to break it down and use right, it." Right. Whereas some people they need more fats in their diet, or other people need more carbs. Right. As long as I'm getting fuel in, I'll use it. Right. Right. It's dope. Um, when you so so you live in England all the time, apart from when I'm here. <laughs> Apart from when you're in the great yeah. country of America. My home is still uh, England. Do you ever think about changing homes or no? With the advent of the games and all that kind of stuff and yeah. like kind of career-wise or are there things opening up for you here in that way? Definitely. Uh, I'm thinking about it more this year. Uh-huh. I've been out here a lot more this year than uh, before. I mean, last year was the first time I took time out of work to concentrate on the games what was the work a fire fire oh all right, 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 right. i so, knew that i so knew I, I heard that at uh oc throwdown yeah so I, I just, saw you just like I've a just fucking gorilla <laughs> jesus christ uh, have you, you 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 watch tapes of yourself compete right no not very often you never if you did you'd look and you'd be like that bitch is crazy she like you fucking you it's like watching it's almost like watching like a, a meat grinder work like <laughs> watching you on the bike like from the bike and all that and like i don't know for people that like the oc throw on the head what, what you you started you started with squats yeah the final what event? was it yeah the final yeah, event it was uh overhead squats and i'm trying to think what else the movement was it was, was a chipper. That the, was that the weighted Where you ended up ups? on the net. Yeah. And so then you went to muscle-ups. Then you did you hand over the, hand walk. Yeah, they had the assault bike. Then you had to do the uh, front squats and wall balls. And then it was right. the snatchers and the weighted double unders. And then the deadlifts. Then the cargo net. Then the hand over hand. And so there were some people that got to the deadlifts. And then... Some people, I don't know that anybody finished the deadlifts. I don't no. think anybody did finish the deadlifts. No, they spent so all the So nobody, money. you guys, not men or women, nobody finished the deadlifts. Nobody got that far in the workout. There's some people that touched the deadlift bar. And then fucking Sam comes and is on the deadlift bar way before people are even like two, ex- they're like two exercises behind her. And then there's this cargo net that everybody's supposed to climb and then come off of and then do this hand over hand backwards to the beginning of the course. And nobody's gotten to the cargo net at all. This nice big cargo net. And it's almost like the way Logan says it. It's hilarious. He's like, Sam would look at, well, you brought your nice cargo net. I might as well climb that thing, get some sweat on it. And it, it fucking, what a stunning performance. Like, really cra- gets crazy to see. Thank when you, you see other a- athletes that are like the best athletes in the world, high output athletes. And I mean to say it's not it's not it's not it, to say your head and shoulders above them is a like that's fucking how it is. It's crazy in in that workout anyway. It was amazing. It was really phenomenal to see. Um, okay, so did you know you were going to do that well when you go into a workout? Are you like I'm going to walk through this? I know that. Uh, well where my strengths and weaknesses lie um, I know that obviously the longer the workout the better it is for me so a final event being a long chipper that's good for me I went through quite a few internal battles on that workout as especially on the wall balls everything was hurting and I could see Camille and Julie Fouché just behind me and I'm thinking as I'm doing the wall balls why am I doing this? I can't even get onto the podium. And then I'm like, no, keep going. You've got to keep going. This is this is not right. You still have to still do well on this workout. I'm like, but why? There's no reason to. Right. It's those things I think too, like in, in whether it's workouts like that or whether I, um, 
it's like purpose, right? It's like I, I was talking to a buddy earlier today, and and there's a there's a, a kid that would come up and he'd be like, "Hey, how, how'd you stay engaged?" Like uh, I, I used to fight professionally, and like he goes, "How how'd you stay?" Like he says, "I started I, I start and I stopped kickboxing a lot, and um, but I can't stay with it." And how do you stay engaged with it? I'm like, "Well, you have the next thing in front of you that you want to do, or like even after that event's over, like you've got your friends that are." all competing and they need training partners you know and so you're there for them like you it's like always having another higher cause in your mind kind of you know and and like that thing in the middle of workouts like what's it all worth anyway why am I, why am i doing these this? wall balls suck yeah, why am i doing yeah, yeah. these yeah so what what is it like i don't know i always look at it and i look at workouts and i look at like a lot of that stuff when i see people really bang a workout hard and i like watching you that day and i'm like You've got to hate yourself to such a high degree to work out that fucking hard. Like all the best CrossFitters I know, all the best athletes, there's a demon inside them that is like, there's a certain point where it's like, I'm going to fucking just burn through this and fuck like an anger almost. Like, because you got to call on some otherworldly shit to get through a lot of that stuff, like to push yourself into that kind of a hole. I think another thing as well, before we started that workout, because none of the guys had got onto the cargo net they were going to change the workout and take out the weighted muscle-ups for the girls. And we were like, no, why change it? This is what the workout is. If anyone's going to get onto that cargo net, it's going to be because we did the workout as our ex. We're not scaling the workout just to get onto for the cargo net. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was good to actually finish the workout and prove that it was I'm surprised that, they, uh, that that was something that they had considered that they considered stopping i mean that's well, I, I think they just thought that they'd i know there's a lot of talking hard. about a lot of the a lot of this the all of the programming that day people were like oh i don't know if this was done right or this they questioned all that stuff but that was a that was a phenomenal day man and a great i mean i, I don't know to see see all that yeah. but that I think final that thing, yeah that final event was probably one of the most fun ones um if they'd have changed anything, the it would have been fun. take out some of the squats rather than overhead squat, then back squat, then wall ball. Right, right, right. Uh, well, that bike looked to, like death. Yeah. I mean, we did a lot of squatting that weekend. The running with the kettlebells, the, everything. The, that was a brutal competition. Lindsay when smashed we, that, right? That, yeah. Oh. When we, when we finished the competition, I couldn't fully open my arms out for like three days. And then I was competing at Waterpalooza the next... The in Florida or whatever weekend. it was yeah yeah. I did I finally woke up on the Sunday the Sunday I felt fresh I'm like yes I'm ready to compete <laughs> the last day of competition how did you uh, how do you rest for that like if you go one weekend and then the next weekend like what's what's your week look like in between there well it was a little bit unusual for me anyway because I was on a photo shoot for Pure Pharma so the Monday we were working out on the beach and going on like a, a hike and things like that so when i would have probably had <laughs> a, a relaxed, an, uh, yeah. rest day we unfortunately had to be up at like 6 a.m and doing that but it was fun the next day we worked out at invictus and i just did some more like active recovery type things and then when i landed in miami uh, did a little bit of training a little bit of squatting just to try because those competitions were in my kind of off season right it wasn't trying to train for the competitions i was using those as part of my training for the open and regionals right. they were kind of tests to see where i was at what i needed to work on and are those like monetizing working out which is what crossfit has done right and and only recently so, so those competitions, you're, are you obligated to so many competitions to, to for like your sponsors and all that? No, they they were uh, what I chose to do. The Ursi Throwdown I wanted to do because the year before, uh, Lindsay had done it and I did some of those workouts because I was due to come out and train with her. Right. So to see where I stood against her. The weekend after, I did something called the London Throwdown, and Lindsay did those workouts to see where she stood against me. Right. I was planning on doing the same this year, doing the OC Throwdown with Lindsay, and then going back to London to do the London Throwdown. But then uh, Progenix was the main sponsor of Waterpalooza, and they asked if I wanted to do that. So I was kind of like... 
Mm, a week in Miami or go back to London? Right, exactly. Let's 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 give Miami a whirl. It seems like that's way a way better choice all around. And it ended up being a good decision as I ended up finishing on top. So how long do you choice. think? Uh, uh, how long do you think a career goes? In, in in I mean, here's a brand new sport. Like, how long do you think? Do you, how long do you want to be a viable athlete in CrossFit? I think me personally, I'm 32 now. Okay. I'm hoping that I've got this year and possibly next year. Do then, you think women are better athletes when they're in their early 20s or in their late 30s? I think we've got quite a good mix. Uh, Lindsay's obviously younger than me uh, and Val's older and us three were on the podium this year. Yeah. We've got new athletes coming through like Lauren Fisher who's 19 and she's going to be phenomenal. Uh, we've got other athletes who are at the older end and are still going. I'm going to still fight for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give it everything this year and hopefully if my body holds up I'll be back next next year. Do you worry about injuries? Oh, uh, I try not to worry about injuries. I sat a year out due to injury. Right. I know a that full you yeah. That was the recovery. Well, I did the first, I did 12.1 and then was pulled from the games. Just as the games was taking place, I was given the all, all clear to start squatting again. So. Wow. And what was the injury? I broke my kneecap. And so that's you can pieces see. pieces is what I've heard now, right? That's a nice little, nice little arch there. Yeah. Crazy. And it's just healed as a separated piece. Yeah, uh, basically it was uh, misdiagnosed at first. So when they actually said that, oh, you've actually fractured your knee, and they did the bone scan on it, it had already knitted, but as two right. separate. So if they'd have pinned it, it wouldn't have right. knit together. So the only option was they were going to take the fragment out, and the surgeon couldn't guarantee that the scar tissue would be less painful than leaving the fragment in. So I'm like, well, I'm going to see if I can manage with it in. Yeah. I feel like the last, the, and then and then if you take up, I mean, once they start going in to move it, yeah. it's like you like what 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 hole does that create here that then this shifts and then yeah. exactly. I mean, I have my good days occur? and bad days with it, but now most of the time I'm fine with it. It's only when the fragments like in an unusual place or it's moved around and shifted that I get pain with it. Crazy, everybody's got a little something, huh? Do you have brothers and sisters? I've got a younger brother whose 30th birthday is today. Right on. Is he uh, into CrossFit now? Does your whole family CrossFit? <laughs> no, he's he's more into He'll go to the gym and lift weights. He doesn't like being out of breath. Right, so. right, right, right. There's a lot of that. <laughs> but, I mean, um, he supports me fully. He loves watching me. He wears all the CrossFit gear. Right. <laughs> Every trip I go on, I have to bring him back CrossFit T-shirts. But... He's more into, he'll go do his bench press and his, his squats. Right, right. What does he do for work? He uh, He's a joiner. What's that mean? A carpenter. A what? Carpenter. carpenter. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying. I have to do this a lot. I've got an Australian friend of mine and I'm like, so again, say it again. Um, what, uh, um, would you go, would you go back to firefighting or do you still firefight or, or what? I, I had to make the decision. They my career break was due to end on the 1st of June. Okay. That would not be a good date to go back to work. Right. <laughs> Working shifts, I mean, I loved the job. I've done it for 10 years, and being a firefighter is definitely a big part of me. But to work shifts and to then attempt to go back and defend my title would not be a good mix. Right. So I made the decision to pursue my career in CrossFit as far as it's going to take me. As far as it all up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's so much on the. I mean, there's so much on the other side of it too. It's like you're you're into this thing that's completely unknown. It's like one of my friends I was talking to today, um, Kenny Florian. He was a, uh, a MMA athlete for a long time, and now he does broadcasting. For you know what I mean? It's like where we all segue out of the sport goes into all these different variant positions. And CrossFit is way younger than MMA, even you know. Yeah brand new and so that to see where jobs are getting created for people whether it's miranda or whoever whoever is going out you know um I, I, it seems like i don't know it seems like that whole thing about following your passion regardless of what it is it's like i can do this job that's going to give me uh 
the sense of security that doesn't really exist anyway because all those anything can go away you know or following like this is what i really need to follow it's like fuck man if there's something like that in somebody's heart it's like all i can do to encourage them you've got to go and do that thing like that's got to be the thing that you chase right it's like otherwise Definitely. you're living muted you're living in an unexpressed condition i, I loved being a firefighter um and maybe if things hadn't have changed in the fire service then i may have tried to do both but there's so many budget cuts and the job's changing so much that even though I still loved it as a job, it made me want to try and pursue being a CrossFit athlete more. So the changes in the service helped me decide that let's try being an athlete for a little bit. Right. What was the first CrossFit class you did? Uh, I did Helen with strict pull-ups. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Did, you had pull-ups right away coming yeah, from um, your background. Yeah. Being a firefighter, I was always in the gym with the guys. So bench press, bicep curls, pull-ups, you know, you know <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> Isolation curls. Yep. We used to do okay. 21s on a Friday. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> All the boys wanted the beer muscles. It's a trip, isn't it? Like, I don't know, when I look at, like, what... There's a dude that walked in the gym one time. He's like, well, I just want my arms to get bigger. And I go, oh, all right. Yeah, I've I'll had go. that asked quite a few times. Like, how, how do you get your arms like that? How big would be big enough is my question. <laughs> like, at what point would that be enough for yeah. you, do you think? They, it's a weird thing. Yeah, they always ask, like, how do you get your arms like that? I'm like, just lift weights and gymnastics. Oh, you must do bicep curls and stuff. I'm like, it's hilarious. well... No, my arms are... Not in years. My arms are the biggest they've ever been, and I've not done a bicep curl for... I can't remember the last years. time. It's been a long time for me, I know. Same. It's amazing, like, even just doing one... Like, even if you just picked one movement, like, if you're like, I'm just going to do cleans. Like, your whole body would be in a condition that was unlike anybody that was like, I'm going to do some chest and tries today, <laughs> and I'm going to do back and bars on Wednesday, and, like... <laughs> It's like it's like you're not. It's not. It's like you're pretending to move. Yeah. Most people, the way they move in the gym, is it's like an imitation of movement that happens. You know, we just did Carl Pelley's, uh movement seminar that he put on, and man, the way he breaks down movement is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I I look forward to like a time when when schools kind of take that kind of thinking into their into their scholastic education of people it's like to not like I don't know it's like Marcus I think it's Marcus Aurelius who talks about like a, a fit and able community is your responsibility yeah. to, to be able to have excellence over your body and like we don't have any of that like we've got these conversations that are so backwards as far as diet and, and that goes is it different in England or is it the same I know you guys have horrible food there yeah. but <laughs> that's all I really know about England uh, I think it's similar sort of things. The like sport in school, I think we're so far behind you as well. So you think that your fitness in schools is bad? Ours is so much worse. Really? Yeah, at least you have like the big focus on getting scholarships and going into football, into basketball, baseball. Right. There's so many more opportunities for somebody who's good at sport. Right. Whereas in the UK, we do... PE twice a week and it's not really that good there's no co real concentration on it you possibly if you are motivated enough you'll do outside classes and do some other sports so I was lucky enough that I was into playing football soccer rugby so I did sports outside of school uh, whereas a lot of my friends at school the people who were in like my age range a lot of them didn't bother they were too so interested so none of your soccer was really scholastic that, that's a th those are community clubs or something that's outside of well, academia I, I, I played through school but it wasn't really like they didn't encourage it a lot it it's was crazy because you guys are fucking it. nutso for the so like it's not wild that it's if not encouraged a, more yeah I mean I hope that it's better now but when I was at school it was only if you were a boy then you'd get pushed into sports more. Wild. Is it a different... Uh, so here we have rules like where if there's not if there's not a sport that girls and boys can... Like if there's not like uh, 
for, for girls, there's not a, 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 a side. Like, they dropped wrestling, right? And they dropped wrestling from a, a lot of schools because there wasn't women's wrestling. There wasn't enough interest for women to. And so then they go, sorry, it's not equal. We've got to drop it out. Do they do things like that there or no? Um, not as far as I'm aware, but like I said, things have, could have changed. I've, it's been a long time since I was in school. That's crazy. Do you, um, do you feel that, uh, is, there, is there time off when you, like, did you go to college? Yeah, I just went straight from school. Straight from school. Yeah. Is that the way most people go? Like the way yeah. they go here, they finish high school, they go right to college? Get it all out of the way and then get into the real world. <laughs> and then the real world, is there more of a push for people to do jobs outside of, like here it's like if you have a job, it's like go and get a business degree, get a law degree, get a, like, is everything pretty conformed like that in England as well? Um, this or is there um, an entrepreneurial side of it there's that different people are taking? routes for everybody I mean uh, the education system is there people go to university and then go down their chosen career but there's also quite a lot of um, people who go like straight out of school and learn on the job right. as opposed to going to university so there's lots of different avenues do you travel a lot do i yeah i've traveled more than because of CrossFit. Ever, yeah, just yeah. this yeah, yeah, yeah. last t- two years and um when you do do you find that like before you went to miami say like how many days are you there before you compete do you do you settle into the community like into the whether it's the elevation if you're at a different altitude yeah, or I, that's what I try to do or that's jet why, lag or like how do you deal with that stuff that's why uh, I came out like, before regionals and before the games last year and I'll be doing the same this year uh, obviously I did the OC throwdown and then flew to Miami on the Wednesday so I thought no oh, that's no problem it's only three hours time difference right. I'm used to like an eight hours time difference right. that three hours felt so much worse than eight it's hours it's crazy <laughs> how it's different and it, I think depending on how hydrated you are and everything like all that shit yeah it definitely there's a big difference did you uh, when when you travel from other countries then how many days do you need it all depends normally if I'm coming from the UK over this way I'll have a rest day that day that I'm traveling, right. and then as soon as I'm in bed the next day, I am tend to be okay. When I fly back home, because of the time difference going the other way, I kind of lose a day, Right. and then it takes a few days. Uh, I went to Australia at the end of last year. Oh, man. That jet lag got me bad. Really? <laughs> I, yeah. C- came back from uh, Australia, settled straight in when we got there. I uh, came back from Australia and I was waking up at like 3 a.m. every morning. I like two days in a row, I'd wake up at 3 a.m., then I'd have a good night's sleep because I was so burnt out. And I'd be like, yes, I'm back on it. And then, nope, 3 a.m., 3 a.m., full night's sleep, 3 a.m., 3 a.m. I'm like, oh my God, I'm Great. dying. And then finally settle back into the time zone. Um, I want to tell, talk about the, the, last, uh, the last open wide that you did. Yep. What what did you decide when you did that? Like when you like you went out and how how many? There's six of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, five. Five. And you just jumped into it, like kind of. I wasn't bothered what the guys were doing. It was purely me and Annie. Yeah. So you didn't look at anybody else except her. No. I obviously Rich was next to me I I could see where he was but like when he was overtaking me I was like in a world of pain I'm like do I want to feel any more pain I'm like I'm quite happy just where like finishing at? this workout <laughs> it's a it was a, it's a crazy it was crazy it's I mean like when you, you I don't know it's crazy to me when I look at athletes like you guys like at that end of things it's there's a, a, a regionals athlete that was at a, a a local in El Paso Texas at a local um tournament there like a competition and 
who went with all the guys and smoked everybody. And like at the end of it, the the best part of it, there and this just normal looking girl, whatever. And the the last bit was it was like it was like 150 wall balls, 100 double unders, jump on muscle ups. She got off the ring. She did I don't know 15 muscle ups at the end of that, and in, in, in like 10 minutes, you know, 10 or 12, I forget. And uh, and there's a dude that was finished next to her, and he's on his hands and knees, and he's in in that pose. And she walks by. She's like, "Good work," <laughs> like just completely fucking fine. And I'm like, "That's that's it's crazy," but. Like, you're like that with top competitors in the world, which is fucking phenomenal. It's like, did you always think that you had an engine like that, or is that something that you built up? And if you take a week or two weeks off, how much does that affect your, your output? Um, I don't know. I think it's something that I've definitely worked on. I think that it must have naturally been there. Everybody's got... Every top CrossFit athlete has got something in their armor. Lindsay's got her strength, so mine would be my engine. I still have to work on it. Sure. Um, I think at the moment it's better than it was last year. Crazy. Which is definitely a positive. Um, I think if I took time off, then obviously it would regress, but I think that the that's probably the quickest thing to get back right as opposed to strength if i take time out from lifting i find that hard to get back really that's that's one of my weaker things what about technique technique i'm probably not the best (laughs) i was just gonna say you know i like i don't know anything but i've seen your deadlift you know and do not diss my deadlift. I'm just saying. I tried, right, listen. <laughs> I tried to change my deadlift and lift like people want me to lift. And every time I did a workout, my spinal erectors blew and I couldn't do anything. I lift how I lift and I get through wads and I am fine. You very rarely see me doing a deadlift workout with a belt on. I did men's RX the seven today. Uh-huh. So that's seven rounds of seven deadlifts at 245. I did not have a belt on. My back is fine right now, so I'll keep deadlifting <laughs> how I deadlift. <laughs> so you don't think about uh, about that technique for I sure. I have I have worked with uh, the powerlifters, Laura and Shane Sweat. Yeah. And what do they say? What I mean, what are those guys that are like the top experts? Because obviously you've got them. At my your back is stronger than my little glutes and hamstrings. Sure. So that is a strong position for me to lift in. I would not recommend it for anybody else, but that is where I am strong. I can lift in that position. Right. I try and, that, and that, lift in that, another that way, position and that being, fries being my Being a back. completely hewed up back and coming up, like a, almost like the way a, a yoga roll is, the way you right roll up out of a yoga pose. I don't know what that one's yeah. called. But it's fuck. It's amazing. I'm, oh, I don't know. I, I'd never seen you lift before that, before that OC throwdown. I was like, holy shit. But... Amazing. Did I get through those deadlifts five? I mean, I can't say. There, there was I'm nothing like, wrong. All, with I, that. all I look at with that and that time, and I go, I guess I'm lifting wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what about for snatches and things like that? How do you feel like that comes up as far as, uh, you know, I don't know. You hear, you, you see guys like I, I remember seeing Kalipa and and, um, and the uh, he was he was neck and neck uh, with Spieler. Uh, a few years ago, like they were both like fourth and fifth, fifth and sixth, like right in there for the whole all the games, right? And and it's crazy because you think that Spieler can't not be the most technical. He has to like to move those kinds of weights. He has to be right on. Yeah. Whereas like for Kalipa, he can he can do a reverse like curl basically, yeah. and he's got that weight cleaned. And so like for you, where 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 do you stand in that? Are, are those lifts that you really look at and you're like, I need to have the snatch right? I I work hard on my ollie lifts Uh i try um i'm never going to be the biggest athlete so i have to try and get as efficient as possible for me it's not going to be the one rep maxes i'm never going to win those events but if i can be efficient at the mid weights so in a in a workout where there's 30 snatches or 30 clean and jerks right. then I can hold my own against somebody like Lindsay right whereas a one rep max I'm never going to beat her right um, 
I feel like it's, I mean, it's a, that's the amazing discussion too about it. Like I look at CrossFit and it seems like for a while, like you could have a Kalipa win or a Spieler win, but it seems like now more and more and more, it's getting narrower this general idea about who the fittest person is it's like you kind of have to be a certain size range to be considered to win it it feels like it feels like for for women you need to be between 155 175 for men you need to be between 185 135 is that right yeah that's what you weigh right now yep crazy i just weighed myself in lindsey matthews bathroom crazy (laughs) So do you feel like that's a, like like a Annie Sakamoto, who's, how, how big is she, 115? Yeah, she's only little, bless her. Right? But like, so do you feel like there there is like a an optimized size range where, you know, like you said, if, if somebody's too big, they're not going to go to do Metcons yeah, very I well? Think, or I think you're always going to have those that sit outside of it. You'll probably have... Um, if you take all 50 competitors, you're going to have like an average, but then you're going to have the smaller ones and a few of the bigger ones because it all depends on... It's never about how well you're doing one workout. It's your average Cumulative. across. Right. It's like, for me, I know that sitting at this weight that I can still run fast, I can still do my gymnastics, and I'm still getting stronger I mean, the, this last week I've hit three PBs, three PRs, so I'm still getting stronger. Is that the UK way of saying? We call it PBs, yeah, yeah. personal best. Yeah. PR's not a good word in the UK. Why? It's basically a medical term for per rectum, so it means in the butt. It means in the butt? Yeah. That's a medical term? Yeah, it means that you've had something administered in your butt, per rectum. Huh, and that's medical? So we just say personal best. Personal best. Yeah. So PR is the shortened term for if you want to get saucy with your lady or something <laughs> and you're like, hey, you want to PR, PR tonight? tonight? <laughs> is that that's the way? It could work. Okay. Uh, Good to know. Good to know. I yes. learned in, in Brazil it's different. It's not It's not either of those. But any, that's a whole other story. I digress. Um, so if I can keep getting stronger at this body weight, yeah. I know that I can still do well in the conditioning side of things and still my gymnastics still feels good i i feel good at this weight i get any heavier then i start to feel a little bit sluggish right i cut for a ollie lifting competition last year and i went down to like 58 kilos and that's the leanest i've ever been and that was i was drained right so i know that this is a good wait for me and you're just looking to lift singles and all is that right yeah 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 that's tough still though i mean to not have it's always a like with wrestling or with fighting or something it's like always the same thing it's like how light can i get but yeah. still have enough endurance and still have the strength you know because you you it was one of those that. things that in the 63 kilo category that's one of the most popular women's categories i had no chance of winning uh, so it was worth it was only an experiment it was worth cutting weight and seeing how I could do I very nearly bombed I missed my first two snatches it was quite nerve wracking luckily I got my third one uh, and then I made my clean and jerks do you go in with mental like uh, things like I'm supposed to do I mean like, like now like holding this title do you feel like I'm you know like people are gunning for you at at tournaments like that or like you're supposed to be at a certain do you head trip at all about any of that shit um i'm quite a chilled out person i try not to think about things like that i absolutely love training so i would train regardless of whether we had the crossfit games or not i would have to be working full time at the same time right but that was one of the perks of being a firefighter we got time to train. We had a gym on station. So I still trained full-time when I was working. So you would still have me training. The games is a bonus. Right. So I want to get to the games. I want to defend my title. But the fact that I'm there is good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice to get invited to the party. Yeah. Yep. There was, um, there was a woman I'd read a story about, and then I talked to her a few times that was trying 
she wanted to compete at the games, and then she was working towards that, and then it came out that she was transgendered, and that she still wanted to go, and then she they said, no, you can't because you were born a man, and you can't compete as a woman, and then she's suing for, I think, two and a half million dollars. Had you heard about this case? Yeah, I think everybody has. Oh, I, or, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think a lot of people have heard about it. There's quite been quite a bit of publicity. Do you have an it. opinion? I I think everybody has the right to compete in the CrossFit Opens. Whether she should be allowed to compete against the other women, then that's the decision of the games. I a very diplomatic way to say that. I'm I'm not a medical person. I don't know if she has any advantage over other women or not, so right. I don't think I'm in a position, position to say. Yeah. Huh. I thought about it a lot. I don't know. I, I, t- I feel like everybody needs to be supported and encouraged like wh- wherever they are, you know what I mean? Definitely, I mean... And I, I feel like that's a huge part of life, everywhere, like yeah. whatever it is. Regardless of your sex, gender, race, sexual preference, whatever... I think the CrossFit community is one of the most accepting. Some of the stuff that I've seen regarding this issue has been quite negative, which regardless of whether she's allowed to compete or not... Is that stuff change. on the internet? Yeah, I try not to read things. Because I, I never go, because yeah. I don't know anything that anybody said about it. I just kind of heard about it. Somebody yeah, told me. You get you get other stuff. You get people I'm sure commenting. people send you shit all the time, too. I get too. commented on... like people say stuff about me like uh, one of the, the things that sticks out in my mind is after the 2011 games there was a photo of me pulling the sled over the line and somebody was commenting has anybody checked me for a penis after that day on I take what people write with a pinch of salt and try not to get involved if people are so petty to be writing <laughs> stuff like that then I don't want to be bothered reading it sure I mean, I like I don't know. It's the same. It's like it's weird. It's like it's so weird. All the all the uh, similarities between this and MMA. It's like whereas like you're an athlete that's like this small. Like you're like well, I'm like a professional athlete now. Like you know what I mean for I'm the best worker out or or whatever. But like this, you're 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 completely accessible to fans. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, if you're a football player or if you're uh, a basketball player, th- you don't have fucking fans that are sent. You're not no, on definitely. message boards with those idiots. <laughs> and here, you're on CrossFit.com, and there's message boards. You're like, they're saying mean stuff about me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same, like, being on Twitter and things like that. All that shit. People don't realize. Like, somebody actually tagged me in a comment where they were slating me. And I just, like, put a tweet back. I'm like, if you're going to slag me down, why tag me in the post? Yeah, don't let me know. <laughs> It's like, yeah. what's the point? I know, they were like, oh, we're really sorry. We didn't start like that. I'm like, eh, I don't care, block. Get and out of there. And that's the other thing is that, like, it's like I've never had face-to-face. There are a lot of people that said a lot of things on the Internet. Face-to-face, I've never had anything but fans. <laughs> like, when we're right here and there's nothing yeah. between us but air, you think, what? <laughs> like, there's, <laughs> there's – and people are just – they just they, they don't consider that like it's a small world like the world is close and we're together and we're a family it's like one little small little universe that we're in it's not fucking huge it's not just the cross board, but everything man and like what you put out there man it, it's it's affecting things and there's a, like energetically there's something to that you know I, I feel like it, it's just interesting I don't I don't I don't have anything like one way or another um, with like what happens or what I think ought to happen out, out of that uh as far as as Chloe Johnson is 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 the is the woman, um, but there's a there's a woman in MMA, Fallon Fox, that was uh, she's had, I don't know she had like five pro fights I think or something like that. She had a few, and she was fucking knocking people out. She was, and then it then she came out so, somehow it came out and she said oh, I'm transgendered and they're like you can't f- fight as a woman then and and for me looking at that I'm like to me that's like a dude beating up a girl is how I kind of feel like it because there's like a different kind of predation that happens I think for for males like there's testosterone's different you've had strength of like it just is there seems to be differences that like even if you change that midstream that stuff is there still it's different yeah. it's like, different I think it's clear that 
when you watch the guys at the CrossFit Games and the girls, the guys lift different weights than the girls for a, a reason. The right. guys are naturally stronger. Right. Like, if you take the strongest woman in the world, possibly Laura Sweat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she is phenomenally strong and no other woman can come close to her, but she still can't lift as much as the strongest guy. Right. She can outlift a lot of men, right. but take the strongest guy in the world, right. he's going to outlift her. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, for one, if I were... If if I like as handsome as I am, I would know I would make a tremendously stunning woman. But especially with that beard, <laughs> if I uh, I don't think I would feel like I would want I wouldn't want to fight women. Like you know what I mean? It's like that's not it's not a route I would be like. That's not how I'm going to express a, yeah, my. Sport, I'm assuming you know? that she wants to be accepted as a woman, right. and that's why she wants to compete against the other. I think women. you get guys to bang you then. Like then that's being accepted as a woman in that way. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you've succeeded now. No comment. <laughs> I'm staying out of this now. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's like, it, like, you look good in heels. Fantastic. Moving on, you know? I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting deal, like, all, all that stuff for me. Like, because I, I remember when I, well, I don't, I, had, I don't know. I had a whole other conversation with a friend of mine about, about all that. And uh, just every, everybody's different flavor. And it just comes down to, like, whatever anybody likes to do, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, do that thing. And, and go out and, and progress from there, you know, like, this is interesting to me, because, like, like other things, like, I never, you, you never know, when you're talking about, like, this thing that you love, firefighting, how long did you want to do that? Um, I, were you a little girl, and you're like, that looks kind of boss, I would like to, no, I actually wanted to be a lorry driver, but that was for different reasons, I found out, a semi truck, like a, yeah, I found out they had a bed in the cab, and I thought, how cool is that job? If you're tired, you park up and you go, go to bed. <laughs> so then firefighters, they have beds on station. Hey, there we go. I can sleep. <laughs> Sounds like you just like to sleep. Yes, yeah, I yeah. love sleep. Thing. <laughs> no, seriously, I didn't want an office job. I wanted some sort of feeling that I was helping somebody. I was applying for uh, the RAF and the police and the fire all at the same time. Um, was there one that you were hoping for more than the other, or like any of them would have been solid? Well, I got through the police and the fire both to interview stage uh, at the same time. Uh, the RF was taking a longer process, and that's when I made the decision. I'm like, police, you have to work harder, you get paid more, but nobody likes you. Fire service, you work two days, two nights, you get four days off got gym on station everybody likes you well like, mm, that's quite a good job yeah and you get to help people so i'm like this is a pretty good deal so there you go that's that's that's, that's why i made that decision L- lacy was just in florida and she watched a a, a crossfit competition it was all is uh all firefighters and and so they came in their full gear yep breathers and and their jackets yep. and the boots and all that and like she said that, so then the deadlifts were like, they had to be way outside of their uniforms to be, like, all that stuff, you know? We've, um, I've done the firefighter games a couple of years in a row, and there's a competition called, like, the Ultimate Firefighter, and you do everything in full gear. Crazy. Um, that's pretty crazy. I've done, um, for charity a while back, uh, 2012 at Labine, I did a month of Hero Awards. So every day we did a Hero Award. Every and, day? Yep. And I did Murph in full breathing apparatus and steamed my face. I was so hot on the last mile that when I actually finally took my breathing apparatus off, I had a red face for like three days because I'd steamed myself inside the mask. <laughs> I, I can't get over a Hero Award every day. Yep. No rest is? Nope. Did you find you had to eat differently during that time or no? Like I said, if I'm hungry, I eat. eat so I, I was eating yeah, a lot. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Yeah, that whole thing, like, like dudes are like, decide to wear their lucky jackets or whatever, like, that are fucking burned. Like, yeah. th- like that's a job to me that just seems cra- like crazy in a, in a way like, uh, th- there's such an inherent lack of safety with it you know like you're going in and and um have you been in in a live fire 
I have, yeah. I was in the fire service for 10 years. Uh, it how was often does it come up? Like in a month, how many fires are you in? It's all varied. When I first joined, we were a lot busier. Um, my first station was uh, near a motorway, so we had a lot more... Was near what? A mo- uh, like a freeway. So okay. we had a lot more RTCs, a lot more like road accidents. But uh, one of my first jobs were a flat fire where we brought a person's out, which is quite rare for... Um, for a probationer to actually have a fatality so in my first month we brought a person out which was quite weird because to see your first burnt person but it's one of those things you get through it with the guys and you get on with it that would be the heart like i don't know to me like being a first responder and being like here's the like you guys are on the front end of that you know that is amazing you have to like work as a team and you get through it as harsh as it might seem to some people you kind of try and have a a laugh and a joke about things sure the hardest like hitting job for me was um two teenagers uh we had on um it was christmas eve um it was um joyriders there was a 13 year old boy and a 13 year old girl in the back and there was an 18 year old uh, lad as a passenger and they were joyriding and they crashed on Christmas Eve the two 13 year olds unfortunately uh, we couldn't save them as much as we tried and that to me was probably one of the hardest jobs that I had to do because I was thinking they're 13 they're they're not going to see Christmas at such a young age all because their parents yeah all because they were stupid and wanted the thrill seeking well it's something that we've all done right I mean it's like I've not I've not stolen a car (laughs) what's that I've never stolen a car (laughs) ah no but But like I mean to go go, go, you know what I mean like that kind of thing you know I mean it's like any any like any kind of you know, oh, we went climbing up this ridge and then jump somebody off, fell yeah. or whatever. Or you jump off yeah. and there's pylons under the water. Like, there's all that stuff, you know? All those little, like, those little near misses, you know, that not no, everybody misses. No, definitely. But I think children is definitely one of the hardest things to get over. That's what cop friends of mine have said. that One had said that the hardest thing that she'd seen was, like, one of these big screen TVs that had fallen on a newborn. Yeah. And, and, uh, and... And out of a lot of horrible things, but you see something like that, and she's yeah. just like, you can't, you don't ever not see that again, you know? Like, that's something that's there. Yeah. Would, would you still do that then? Um, would there be an opportunity for you to go back into firefighting after this, or would you retest and all that when you talk um, about, like, that you wouldn't go back yeah, to it first? I, I love being a firefighter. Um, I went through the route of promotion uh, just before... I left, I was uh, a watch commander, so I was the highest rank that you can be still riding a fire engine. So, cool. So that was like the best of both worlds. I had authority. I could be in charge of um, a job up to three pumps. So I had my own station, ran it. But any bigger jobs, I still got to muck in. I still got to put fires out. and So it was kind of the best of both worlds. If I went back, I'd have to reapply, which would probably actually be a little bit more fun going back as a firefighter because you don't get the added pressure of all the paperwork. Don't you think they would look favorably on you anyway? I'd probably be quicker going through the promotion again. Right. But I would have to to restart. Yeah. The way it is. I'd have to do the minimum probation again and then I'd be able to go for the promotion. Would you work for CrossFit? Uh, possibly. Uh, when I've been asked before, it's always been... As a firefighter, I only had one full weekend off out of eight, so I, I didn't want to give <laughs> that weekend up to be teaching on a level one. Right. So it could be something that I consider further down the line. At the moment, I'm just enjoying training and trying oh, yeah, to yeah. get myself ready. Are your friends athletes or are your friends old friends that you've had for a long time? I have both. I, I mean, have, yeah. has it switched now? Like before, that's like, I, I only hang out with firefighters because I'm a firefighter. And now is it, I only hang out with crossfitters. Cause no. I'm a- I obviously spend more time with crossfitters just because of training and things like that. Right. But I still have a close group of friends who I've known from school. and We still hang out every now and again. And 
they get drunk and I'm the designated driver. Awesome. <laughs> you never drink? Oh, uh, really? occasionally. When you do, you get hammered drunk. Uh, I was the last athlete standing at the 14.5 after party. Look at you go. Raving it up. My cool down was a beer. One beer. <laughs> no, I had more than one beer. <laughs> 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 I didn't get as bad as I did at the after party in Miami. Let's just say that. How I'm, many does I'm it take to get... Yeah, is it true that English people have a higher tolerance for booze than regular humans? I used to. But obviously I don't drink as often. What are the most beers <laughs> that you ever drank in a day? Oh, I've once drunk about 10 pints of Stella. And that was definitely a big mistake i wouldn't be able to do that now i've i have one pint of stella well, you, you, you have to train you just have to train for it yeah you could get to 10 again yeah uh, it'd probably take me a, a year maybe when i retire from crossfit i'll aim to get what about what about mushrooms <laughs> weed nothing no we can't we get drugs tested it's, I got the, it's legal in america oh uh, well i got like tested really, for the really. fire service as well so i've not for mushrooms they can't test you for that well, I'm, I'm not interested in trying. I'm good, thank you. I'll just eat the normal mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's all legal. Oh, well, it's not all legal. I'm sorry, it's not. Um, well, thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, uh, it's perfect really appreciate timing time. because they're all shouting out there that they're hungry. That, that they're hungry? Yeah, they're all waving, going, Billy. Do, do, you feel, do you feel when you look at people across from you that you're working out with, like when you said that when... when you, Anne is the only other one in the room. Do you feel uh, I'm going to smash that bitch? Do, do you think that? Is that in your head? No. I Come on, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. You're like fucking redhead, and she's Thor's dot, like you're God's <laughs> dot. Like, do you, do you go into it, and you're like, you know what? No, my. I'm going to light her up right the now. Whole she's gonna feel purpose, silly. The whole purpose of that workout was I've obviously not competed against her for two years, so I had no idea what she was going to put out there. I never go out that fast when I work out. So that was a big risk I took. But I wanted to get out there and see if she'd push back. And, and luckily you, I held on. I learned that on a thruster and burpee workout, if that comes up at regionals, I will hopefully beat her on that workout. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. But there's going to be a lot more workouts, so I can't take anything for granted. Do you think she's a nice person? Do you have animosity when you go in at all? We have no animosity. Yeah, I can't Do you ever feel way. like that with any competitors that you have where you're like, that's somebody I never want. Like, I, I just. I'm not that type of person. Not? No. I obviously want to win, but I don't have anything against anybody. Like, I just try and use what they're doing to make me better, to right. try and beat them. Right. Uh, is there uh, uh, a, a bureaucratic aspect to it? Is there like politics involved in the actual competitions themselves where you're like, ah. Me personally, I try not to think about anything like that. No, It's like, it. life's too short. Why get stressed? All right. Let's just Fair go enough. out there and have fun. If I win, then bonus. If not, then when I you need started to try this, higher. When you started CrossFit, did you think, I want to compete at the games level? Uh, in my, I qualified for the games in my first year. So uh, I came 19th that year and missed out on the final workout. I sat there in the stands with a huge beer watching them do the final workout. And my only thing was, I want to come back next year and make every single workout. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's pretty fantastic. And thank you for your time. Do you have sponsors or anything that you want to thank or say hello to or... And Hello I know you just did a fantastic <laughs> Rikers Brother uh, photo shoot I saw the other day. Yeah, keep eyes peeled. There's going to be some more tasty photos. Is that right? Where's yeah. that? Where's that? Where's that going to be shown? They'll be uh, posted on Instagram as the as they are released. All right. So we'll thank them for that shoot. Yeah, yeah. And Kiki Dixon for organising it. Uh, thank Rogue Fitness. We've got Progenics, GLC 2000, Pure Farmer, Rock Tape. Uh, Firefly Recovery and Reebok Dr. Lindsay Matthews and we always have to thank Dr. Lindsay I mean, Matthews I really uh, yeah that goes without saying yeah we right. do well thanks <laughs> thanks very much and uh, we'll go get something to eat and thanks for listening everybody thank you and goodbye